welcome back. It is Vlogmas part six. Today we are focused all about the Spekulatius cookies. They're one of my very favorite types of cookies and I thought, hey, it would be really cool to make them myself. I have two different approaches that I use. So first, I try my hand using these traditional Spekulatius model or Spekulatius forms. And then for comparison, I give it a go with these much more contemporary forms. And I'm also going to share a little bit of the history of Spekulatius, which is actually something that is quite interesting if you're interested in illustration because they are these very visual storytelling kind of cookies. And then for the additional illustration part, of course, I'm going to be doing an illustration. So you will see basically a little food illustration. Oh my goodness, this is rock hard. We do have that issue with our fridge that it tends to freeze things. <laughs> goodness, I think this needs to stand out for a while. So everything is going exactly to plan. While we wait for that dough to soften up again, I want to take the opportunity to share a little bit of the history of the model of the form that is used to create Spekulatius traditionally. I actually bought this book on the subject and I have found it to be fascinating. So if you have any interest in kind of the history of illustrating, I think this ties in with it pretty well. And the reason is that these type of cookies that have a very visual kind of storytelling component to them came from the time when there was very little literacy in society. So people were not able to read and because of that, they were able to read these pictures instead for information, teachings, religion, all sorts of topics to be shared. And actually the content of the topic and what these cookies depicted very much changed over time as did kind of the target audience or who would be able to have access to these cookies. The book starts and it goes in much more detail. So I'm just gonna give you kind of the 101 overview. Um, but basically going back as far as the ancient Romans and Greeks, you saw that kind of relief structure and often it was really for decorative urns, for example, rather than for food, but they already used this technique. And then in the 1400s, you see it in Switzerland in the cloisters. And that is where 
because they had access to honey, which was a sugar that they could produce themselves, they then had this tradition. And because you had this tradition in the cloisters, that's also why a lot of the imagery is religious at the beginning. Then it was a very regal, you know, luxurious item only for the ultra rich and powerful. And they had mortars made out of their own image, for example. They would have giant feasts where they showed off their wealth through the sheer number of different designs that they could have to tell their own story. They had a lot of these custom designs made of themselves, for example. And then over the years, it changed to depicting more of that everyday life of an everyday person. And so this book is really cool because it shows that transition. It also helps you with a few examples, analyze kind of the symbolic meaning of these different designs. And it explains the transition from when you had, for example, like a single element to moving into mass production where you have multiple cookies in one sheet. The book also explains how you have, for example, the Renaissance st style and the Baroque style, which is gonna be so much finer and more delicate. The book also goes into detail about the different type of molds, molde, that you can use and which type is for which type of cookie. And basically one of the key differences is the depth of the form. So I'll show you two for comparison. Here you have one, which is relatively deep. You have much deeper, rougher designs, for example, for Lebkuchen, then this one is great for Spekulatius. And then you have really, really fine designs with tiny hairline kind of details that are not deep at all. And I'll show you one of those so you can see the difference here. And these are used for anisbrötli, which is a very, very fine dough. And there's also forms that you can use to shape uh, marzipan. I love marzipan. Some of the molds work for multiple types of cookies, but usually there's kind of a range of which type of cookies and cookie dough you could work with for each of the different type of molds. So I'll just show you a direct comparison. If you're interested in pictorial storytelling and some of the history of this, this is truly eye-opening and really fascinating. And it's one of those examples for me in the world where it's this tiny little piece, like you see a cookie in a supermarket. You don't think much of it, but if you find a little spark of interest and you dig into it, it's like a whole another world. I cut the dough in little slices to help it warm up a tiny bit faster. I think we can start. I am a bit nervous about using this mortar. I've used this in a previous year and that worked, you know, quite smoothly because it is flexible. of this needs to go in there. I have a feeling this is way too much or way too little, <laughs> but I guess I'll find out. scary parts. You're supposed to lift this off somehow and I have no idea how, so let's give it a shot. Oh no. Ah. No. This is definitely more difficult than it looks. Goodness, this is a mess. 
That was only half the battle. Now you have to get these out of the form. Okay, let's turn it around. Here comes the first one. Oh, it broke, but it's so cute. Maybe if you move it a little with your finger. Come on. No, it just breaks off. Oh my goodness. Yes, okay, okay, this one's gonna make it. This one's gonna make it. Come on. Yay! <laughs> Yay, that's exciting. Okay. Come on, my little dog. Do you look like a dog? Hey! All right. My little pretzel, join the group. All right. Oh man, this horse is a lost cause though. I'm just gonna... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, horsey. This is not working. Not working at all. So, uh, first judgment. This is definitely harder than it looks, but I'm gonna keep practicing. I got enough dough to keep going for a while. So maybe let's see, by the end they might turn out a little better because with everything in life, it's just about practice, right? funny how bad this is going. I have tried using a lot of flour, little flour, using colder dough, using warmer dough, warming it up with my hands. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm definitely not doing it right because <laughs> I have managed to get out a total of hmm, four whole cookies and two half cookies out of a set that should have netted me 15. Well, this is going from bad to worse. I think we can all see that. So I'm going to use wonderful old Google and see if there's any age-old tricks to making this work because clearly hundreds and thousands and millions of people before me probably have somehow managed to figure this out. All right, had some lunch, read up a little on I'm feeling more confident that I might have a little trick for how to make this work. So, feeling inspired, feeling hopeful. So the trick that I read about is to take a little bit of fat and actually oil the model. And then only lightly cover it with some flour. So I feel like this is gonna be my last attempt. Either this is the way to go or it might not be happening for me. What I definitely found is that I'm not the only person online that is struggling with spekulatios. Okay, and the second tip that I got was that definitely you want the dough to be cold. So you know how I let it warm up before because it was so rock solid? Well, maybe that would have been good to begin with. <laughs> Moment of truth with technique two. Man, Perfect. 
I'm switching to this because you know what? I would like to actually eat some cookies. <laughs> and at this rate, I don't know, there'll be Easter cookies. go into the oven. This took me hours and it doesn't look very good. So just after I put the first rack of cookies in the oven, I thought I would, eh, just out of curiosity, reread the instructions for these modern silicone spiculatius molds because I thought, you know, the last time I used this, this seemed a lot easier. I was more successful with this and um yeah let me just show you the sentence the key sentence slide rack with the molds what da 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 da, -da. before removing the biscuits from the molds allow them to cool down for approximately five minutes on the rack <laughs> well that makes things a whole lot easier doesn't it if you're not trying to peel this raw dough out of a mold. It's just gonna pop out when it's baked, and I remember, that's why it was so easy. So, I'm just filling the two molds I have one more time now to try to get a second rack of cookies going. Wow, that is one beautiful Spiculatius cookie. Look at how, just look at how defined all those features are. For a beginner baker such as myself who maybe only bakes for very occasional special occasions, I would go with this modern version. If you really want to commit to the craft, to the process, to learning and putting in the hours on the baking side, similar to my passion on the illustration side, then definitely the old school molds, the Spiculatius model, are incredible history rich gorgeous definitely a top pick but for me they were just too difficult to get to work and i'm super 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 happy with these cookies oh, i'm so glad i remembered to read the instructions let that be a lesson to you start there <laughs>